at some of the basics of fog and lighting and how to adjust this um, in this last one. Something else that um, trips people up are some things that don't convert um, to redshift easily. And so one of those things is grass. There's this you know, wonderful simplification of the hair engine um, down, oops, wrong, <laughs> wrong tab, um, down here called grow grass, which is blanked right now because I'm on the light and you can't grow grass on the light apparently. Um, but grow grass, it, it, but grass is basically just like it's architectural grass. It's like, it's just meant to be a simplification of the hair engine. So you could apply grass and have it be optimized. Unfortunately in Redshift, that does not work at all. And we haven't really talked too much about the hair engine um, in class. And so I want to give just a kind of quick introduction of how to make that work. It's, it's pretty simple. It works more or less the same way it would work any other way. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to turn the environment off. So I'm not asking Cinema to do too much else. And then I do want to add an additional light um, so that we can have a bit, cause right now the way I have this light set up, it's not so great. There's, it's pretty dark where the grass is going to be put. So we're going to go ahead and we'll just go ahead and create a, um, we could do a dome light so you can see that since we're, um, and then we can just turn that off when we, if we want to change our scene again. Um, a dome light, right, is a big sphere of light. Um, it would be like a dome in a, um, it'd be like a dome light inside, um, a studio lighting rig or whatever. Um, however, one of the awesome things you can do with it is you, there's a texture, right? And so if I was to hold down shift and hit C and search for HDRI, uh, HDR, Oh, uh, okay. So maybe not in the commander. I have to go to the asset browser. All right. So we're going to go to the asset browser. We're going to go to the window, going to go down to the, um, asset browser, not the RS asset manager. And, um, if I just search for HDR, um, there are all of these different HDR options here. Um, I am going to go with, oh, I don't know, maybe default. I want something bright. This is reasonably bright. Maybe we'll do this desert one. And what I need to do is I need to click on this. And I need to drag it into the texture field. So I need to make sure that I have my dome light selected and the texture field is available. So I have the object tab selected, selected. And then I'm just going to go ahead and grab this, drag it down in here and give it a second to download if it's not already in. And you can see it's already in the scene. And now, right, that light's been applied and you can see it applies the colors of the scene um, and it's made this really bright and um, it should be able to show us what's happening with the grass um, pretty effectively. So I am going to, oops, I'm going to close the material manager for just a second um, and I'm going to say original size on this and then I'm going to hold down one and click in or option and click and drag. There we go. If I hold down option and click and drag in the viewport and if the image is bigger than the frame, I can come in here and see this. And I just want this big enough so we can see what's going on. Um, <laughs> this is such an odd scene. That's all right. Okay. So let's go ahead and add some grass. So what I want to do to add grass is I'm not going to be making grass. I'm going to be making hair. So I'm going to select my ground plane. And this is where I can hold down shift, hit C. I can type in hair. And you'll see down here, there's this option to add hair. If I just click on that and double click it, right? Now what it does is it's going to apply the hair to the ground. And if you look down here in the hair objects attributes and we have the guides attribute set, also this is hilariously <laughs> long hair, um, you'll see the link is set to ground. And that basically says, what should this hair be applied to? So um, the first thing we need to do, and we're not gonna do a whole lot in the hair object right now, but the first thing we need to do is we just need to set our length here to something shorter. I'm gonna go with 25 centimeters. And, um, and then I'm gonna hit down, hold down two, should, nope. I guess it has to be option. I'm gonna hold down option. And I might actually, um, uh, oh, I don't know why it's, forcing me. To, there we go. I'm actually going to pull this up a little bit um, above the ground plane so we can kind of see what's going on. And then I'm just going to zoom in just a touch more just to make this a little bigger. Okay. 
So great, we've we've gotten our grass, but it's all dead and brown. It kind of looks like hair. And so what can we do to fix this? If I open up my material manager pane, you'll see that I have this hair material here. Now, if for some reason at this point, your hair is not showing. What you need to do is you need to go to the edit render settings and you need to make sure hair render is checkmarked. And if it is not, you can click on effect um, and you should be able to find that down here somewhere. I don't know why this menu is not working at all right now, but it is not. Um, ideally, when you create hair, it automatically should add this um, to your settings. Um, and we don't need to worry about any of those settings whatsoever right now. So then um, the only changes we're gonna make now are we're gonna go to our hair material. So I'm gonna double click that. Now I want you to note that this hair material is the standard hair material um, in like a standard dialogue. And it's just been made to work with Redshift. There is also, um, if we open this up and go to materials, you'll see hair is included in here. There is a Redshift hair material. If I open that up, basically what it does is it takes all the attributes of a <laughs> of a hair of the hair object and feeds them into this RS hair and then sticks them on this output. So if I click on this in the node editor and close this, um, oh, I thought this would show. Yeah, whatever the case, it's it it doesn't seem to make any difference. I haven't noticed any issues with rendering it without using this hair. Um, and maybe I'm wrong in this and somebody can tell me how wrong I am in the comments. Okay, so, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna focus on changing hair color and things like that. So let's go ahead and make this a color that's more grassy. I'm gonna go green and I'm gonna do something pretty um, vibrant just so it stands out. Um, I'm gonna have the base be a little bit darker than the tips and I might make the tips a bit more yellow green. Um, all right, something like that. But again, I'm just punching this for intense color and you can kind of see on the edge here what's happening, which is why I wanted that edge in view. And now, right, we've got something that's a little grassier. It's a little dried out. looks like it may be winter um, or dying, drying out. Um, one of the other settings we'd, it, that would be good to look at is thickness. Um, the root is one centimeter, the tip is one tenth. If we go ahead and make this like five, um, we're gonna get much thicker blades of grass. Five is probably too much. Um, and really what we want is we just want these to be like, let's make this 0 0.02 as the tip. Um, something else to note, if you're interested, if you end up working with this and you're really interested in what's going on, um, you can also set the width with this curve. So I could make the um, right the the uh, the end that's coming out of the ground very very thin. Make the tip um, the normal hundred percent thickness of whatever I have here. Um, you can also use this to make kind of rudimentary leaves or things that aren't quite the same. If I hold down Control and click, I can add a point here, right? And I could like boost the middle of this. Um, and pull the tip down and, you know, make, you know, very different hair shapes. Um, I'm going to undo all of those things I just did because I don't need to do any of that. I'm just going to be using these values for this one. Um, sometimes it's nice to have some variation. I'm going to set three for the variation there. And ideally that should make things a little bit more randomized. Um, on the side, five looks like it's going to be too much, but should work out. Now, grass rarely stands all perfectly straight upright. So there's a bunch of settings here you can just turn on, turn off. One thing is they're all very uniform right now. So I'm going to check mark this. I'm going to set the variation to, let's just say 50%. Um, and that way, some of these will be taller, some of these will be shorter. They're all going to max out at whatever I have the length set to on my hair object. Uh, and so, but this gives a little bit more variety that way. Scale um, kind of does the same thing, um, but really bend is really nice for grass, um, right? It's going to create kind of that like interweaved um, appearance that most grass has. If I rotate my view up a little bit here, so we can kind of see the top of this grass instead of just the edge, um, and let it render for a little bit. We can see that this is already starting to make this look a little bit better. 
Um, sometimes throwing twist in there or clump um, if you want, right? And you can see how that clumping, um, again, potentially helps. Um, adding some kink to it uh, might work as well, just to give it, just to break up the piles a little bit. And again, you can just play with this until you're happy with um, how this looks. I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm pretty happy with this grass as it stands. I might make the color, the tip color, a little bit greener um, in the end, um, maybe just a little bit more muted. We do have a ton of light in the scene too, so that um, is making it a little bit harder to do. Now, one thing to note, um, right, it's been taking my computer a while to render these frames. By the way, I'm gonna save this right now because I don't wanna lose all of this. Um, there is this crop option, which is basically just a region. So um, I can grab this somewhere on the boundary here and I can just, right, if I'm like, oh, I really wanna know what this grass is gonna look like, right? I can really just focus in on the grass and let that render and it should render a lot faster um, and get to a point where I can be like, I'm happy with, with the texture. Um, you can kind of see um, how that's going. There, you know, there may be problems with this. It might be a little too thick, um, but you get the idea, right? I'm not gonna. I don't want to spend too much more time on this. Um, but the big thing is, right? Some of the default, some of the ways to make this easier on ourselves that Cinema has introduced, including grass, and then also, I'm not sure about fur. Um, we can test if fur works, um, or you can test if fur works. Um, Basically, to add fur to something, you select the object and you go to simulate and go down to hair objects and you can say add fur. I have not tested feathers at all. Um, I am wary of, <laughs> of whether that'll work, right? But at least we've got some grass on an object um, around this bizarre plaid pink tree trunk thing with some blobs on it. Okay. In the next section, we are going to look at... Um, two other things that are harder to do in, um, or that are non-obvious in order to implement in, um, in Redshift.